Hi, this video is a quick overview of the OneClick LCA plugin for Revit. Uh, so uh, once you install the OneClick LCA plugin for Revit, you will be able to see a ribbon at the top of your screen uh, within Revit. And then there are two different options to undertake an assessment and use the um, OneClick LCA plugin. Uh, first option is the LCA in Revit. And the second one is the LCA in cloud. We will start with this one because that's the simplest and uh, fastest. And all that it does is getting all the materials from your Revit model and sending them to the cloud directly. So this process now will open a, a new uh, tab in my web browser. And then I will be able to review all the materials and map them with EPDs and other generic uh, materials and get my results. So this takes a few seconds. There we are. Uh, I will need to select the project that I want to import uh, these materials and the design. Uh, so let me very quickly select this project and this design. I can choose any of those tools. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, I can apply some filtering if I want. For example, if I'm doing a lead assessment, it will uh, ignore internal walls. In this case, let's import all data. And then I will need to define what I want to do with the existing data, if there are any existing data. I can replace them. I can add them on top of the existing data, or I can update any previously imported data. In this case, I will just replace everything for simplicity. And I will continue to the next step, overwrite all the existing data. At this step, uh, I need to confirm whether I want to do any grouping of materials. Uh, as you can see here, I'm getting um, a list of all the different parameters that I get from Revit, like the class, which is um, a translation of the Revit category to what we call uh, a class in one click LCA, the material name, uh, information on whether this element is a composite element or not, the family type name and the material group. So uh, when uh, the value in those parameters that I have checked are the same, these materials, uh, these materials will be grouped together and I will get a single line in my materials tab in one click LCA instead of getting uh, four in this case, or two uh, for all the others. So it makes uh, it makes our LCA model a bit uh, cleaner and tidier and smaller. Um, I'm gonna go to the next step. Which is the mapping uh, step. This is where I will get um, the full list of all the materials that I got from Revit. And then uh, one click LC will map them, uh, some of them, uh, the ones that will be recognized automatically. And then I will need to map anything else that has not been mapped automatically. There we are. Uh, we got our uh, materials from Revit, you can see that there are two different lists, the identified data, as the name suggests, this is uh, material. Uh, these are materials that have been identified and they have been mapped with uh, EPDs and other generic materials. And then at the bottom here, we've got the unidentified or problematic data. And these are materials that were not recognized, so we need to map them manually. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, the identified materials. We can see on the right hand side, we've got a list of uh, the original uh, materials from Revit. 
And right here we can see the EPD that it was mapped with. Uh, we can click here and we can get the full name of the EPD or the generic uh, material in this case. Uh, and right next to it, we can also see the mapping basis. And that means why one click I'll say mapped uh, this EPD with this Revit material. Um, and in this case, it says users in United Kingdom because uh, this is because someone else in the UK mapped uh, this Revit or this material name with this uh, generic material. Um, so it says the same for me. Uh, further down, it says colleague mapping. So that means a colleague of mine in the past mapped uh, this material with this um, EPD or generic material. And we can see uh, further down that it says your mapping. So that means that I did this mapping before. So it uh, suggests again the same. Uh, so there is a hierarchy. So it always starts with your mapping. It looks into your own mapping history and applies the same mappings uh, again. If there is no mapping uh, for this material in your mapping history, let's say, it will look into your colleagues and then uh, users in the same country as your project, and then any other user across the world. As we can see here, it says global users. Um, you can, uh, as I saw, you, uh, you can review um, the APDs that were mapped with these materials. Anything that you don't like, you can simply um, uh, remove it and uh, search for any other material and apply it in the same way as you do it manually in one click LCA. Uh, and once you have reviewed, you can go to the unidentified materials and start mapping those ones as well. As we can see here, these are uh, some um, materials that we don't really need. This is probably the uh, that big topography. Uh, and uh, this is something similar, I guess, and some parking related uh, materials. I don't think that we need any of those. So we'll just remove them. And I would say let's not uh, spend time on anything else. Um, we can mark all of those as I will decide later. And we can then continue to the next step, which is really the results page. So. Uh, one click I'll say will now calculate all the uh, environmental impacts based on the quantities we got from Revit and the mappings that we just uh, did. There we are. Uh, I'm not going to go through the results page uh, for now. Instead, I will just go back to the building materials tab to show you how the materials now look like, the materials that we just imported. Um, as you can see, nothing really uh, is much different uh, than, uh, than when we manually model all these materials. The only difference is that uh, we've got this uh, small green document icon here, uh, which will contain all the different information and all the different uh, values uh, for all these different parameters that we got uh, imported from Revit. You can now uh, change the material quantities, you can change the units, you can remove any of those materials, you can add, add, you can add new materials, uh, you can treat this uh, model now in exactly the same way as you would do if you modeled it manually. Um, so this is the LCA in cloud. Uh, let's go back to uh, Revit and let's have a look at the LCA in Revit. So if we click on it, it will open uh, the plugin within Revit. And the difference here is that we will be able to define the scope. That's the main difference or the first 
uh, things that we will notice, we can define the scope. So instead of getting all the materials, we will be able to select what materials we want to, to include in our assessment based on some rules that we will um, look into uh, shortly. Uh, we can also do the mappings within Revit and we can get the results within Revit and then we can do any change we want in the geometry or in the mappings and update the results. Um, so uh, there's a series of uh, tabs. Uh, we will need to start with the login where we go and log in with our one-click LC account. That's in order to get the results back in, um, in the Revit plugin. Um, then starting from file, this is where we can load any previous mappings if we have done any previous mappings. So if we run an assessment for this specific Revit model, there should be a file uh, in the project folder uh, where these mappings and settings, the overall settings of the plugin are saved. If there's nothing like that, we can just ignore it and go to the settings tab. Um, and this is where we do some basic setting up really. Uh, the most important items here are the database that we're going to use uh, for any project across the world uh, unless it is in the US or Canada. I would say uh, you will need to use a CML data. Um, in Northern America you use the Tracy data. This is just a different characterization methodology in the APDs. Unfortunately if it is not uh, just for global warming potential assessments, you cannot really combine those EPDs together. So you'll need to choose one of those uh, two types of EPDs. And then as you can see, there are the, um, uh, various uh, regulatory databases uh, for different countries that do have some uh, national regulation in place. Uh, you, can, um, you can define what parameters uh, from your Revit model contains LCC data or classification data. If there is any such parameter, the list will be empty because we have not um, uh, defined any parameters to be exported in addition. That's something that we will do right now uh, in the export additional parameters. So we could say that we want to also export the um, type description uh, the type mark and the own class number and own class type. And let's say that we also want to export the material cost parameter. So the parameters that you can export are either type parameters or material parameters, and they can be project parameters or they can also be shared parameters, uh, which we'll show here. Uh, going back to the main settings page, now we can uh, see that we can select the cost parameter here. We only get one because this is the only um, parameter that contains uh, numerical values. And then we've got the user classification parameter, uh, which we can select any of those. Let's go with the type mark in this case. Um, we can define whether we want to do just the building elements or mechanical, plumbing, electrical, and external areas as well. Let's go uh, with uh, building only. And then the most important thing maybe is uh, the default material grouping mode. So that means whether we want to get material information or family type information by default. So that means uh, if we are at an early stage, uh, early design stage, probably we don't have much material information within the Revit model. Uh, so any material information we get uh, will most probably not be of a good use because uh, it's not enough. And in many cases, it might also be wrong. Uh, so what we need to do in that case is to keep family types grouped. So instead of getting the individual materials of a wall, and the volume and the area of those materials, we get uh, the total area of the wall itself and the name of the wall type. And what we do then is mapping it with a construction in one-click LCA. And as a reminder, a construction in one-click LCA is a group of materials that represents an entire element. So there would be some 
uh, wall constructions in the one click I'll say database that represent, for example, a, a brick wall uh, or an aluminum uh, rain screen or a brick slip facade or anything like that. Uh, so if that is the case, we go with uh, keeping family types grouped. If we think that uh, this is a relatively detailed uh, model, we can go with splitting family types into materials and materials is what uh, we get. <clears throat> uh, next, we go to the models tab and this is where we start uh, defining the scope of our assessment. Um, this is where we define what elements we want to get materials from. Uh, by default, it's going to be set as detailed configuration. So that means that it will look into uh, the phase of the material of the element. It will also look into the work set if work sets are en enabled. And it will, it will also look into um, the design option for each design option set. Uh, if design options are also enabled. This model is um, a very simple one, so it only has uh, some phases. Um, then the other option is the active view, which means that anything that I can see in my active view, these are the elements that I will get materials from. And uh, then We've got the selected elements in the model, which means if I select some elements, uh, these are uh, the elements that I get materials from. Um, in this case, we will go with uh, the active view. Um, I will hide uh, these um, topography elements. You can hide stuff either uh, temporarily or permanently with any different way that you can hide things in Revit. I'm going to hide uh, those trees as well. Let's say that we are done. We have uh, hidden everything we want. So next we go to the detail scope tab. And this is where we can keep um, um, adjusting the scope of, uh, of the assessment. So now we, we get a list of all the Revit categories from the elements that are currently included in the list based on our previous selection. And we can um, filter out entire Revit categories or family types, and we can also uh, we can also uh, change the type of data that we get from the elements of this Revit category or family type. For example, we can say that we don't want to get any material information from uh, furniture elements or generic models, or um, we don't want to get uh, material information for windows, but we want the entire area of the window uh, itself. And the same for doors. This is very typical because these kind of uh, elements, they are not modeled um, as accurately as we would, as we would want uh, for a building LCA. Um, and if you click in any of those Revit categories, you can do exactly the same thing for, um, for family types instead. So we could say that this uh, wall is not accurate enough. We don't want to split it into model, into materials, but instead we want to get the total area of the wall. And this is what we just did. Uh, if there are any linked models, they will appear here in this list. However, this is not possible with the active view uh, selection that we did in the models tab. Uh, getting materials from linked models only works with a, uh, with a detailed configuration. The active view and the selected elements uh, mode only work for elements uh, within the main model that you that you uh, that you are that you have open. Um, yeah, uh, you can also search 
or different family types or different families. In real life uh, projects, this list could be uh, way longer, so it could be quite handy. And then we go to the materials tab, and this is where we get the actual list of materials that fall within the scope as we just defined it in the models and the detailed scope. We can see, for example, in the exterior walls, uh, we've got this list of materials uh, and types. You can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five different materials for the same family type. So this is basically the buildup of this uh, very specific uh, wall type. And then we also have uh, this single row for this generic 200 millimeters uh, wall. And you can notice here this icon, this represents uh, that this is an assembly or a family type, it's not split into materials. And uh, this is the wall type that we specifically said that we don't want to split into materials. So instead of the material information, we get the actual family type name again. And uh, so from this point onwards, uh, there are a few different options on how to proceed. Uh, the first one is to start mapping all those materials with EPDs and generic materials, and then go to the results, and we will see how uh, you can do that. And the other option is to now click LCA in cloud uh, right here. And this will send again the Revit material uh, information into the cloud, and you will be able to do the mappings and get the results in the cloud. Uh, the only difference in this case is that you will only get the materials that fall within the scope as you just defined it instead of getting all of the materials from the Revit model. Uh, no need to show that again because the process is exactly the same. Um, and let's assume that we want to do the mappings uh, directly here in Revit. So what we're going to do, uh, let's assume that this is a concrete wall. I will type uh, concrete and I can use some filters as well. Uh, we could say that I want a generic material because it's a very early stage, so I don't know the exact products. And I would want a generic material from one click LCA. Um, so let's look for some uh, concrete in situ. As you can see, uh, there are plenty of data points. So maybe I should be a bit more specific and say I want to see 3037. And let's go with, uh, these are um, assemblies first, and we can go, yes, with uh, ready mix concrete with 0% recycled binders. You double click on it and you can see that it applies it to the Revit material. Uh, you can do the same thing for more than one materials. For example, if all of those uh, Revit materials were the same concrete uh, material. We could select all of them and apply the same material uh, to all of them uh, in one uh, click. Uh, you can also copy any of those mappings and apply it anywhere else. You can remove mappings that you have changed your mind um, or you can remove all those mappings and go directly to the results page and refresh the results. So what this now does is sending all the materials to the cloud in the background, looking into your mapping history, applying automated mappings 
and getting the results. So this is your way to get the automated mappings in Revit instead of mapping them one by one. So once we get the results, we can go back to the materials tab, check all those mappings and change uh, any of those mappings that we might not like. So this takes uh, a few seconds typically. There we are. We get the results in the same um, structure as with uh, the materials tab uh, split into Revit uh, categories. We can also uh, get them in a single list, but yeah, in my opinion, Revit categories uh, are a bit tidier to look at. We can check the exterior walls. We can see the original uh, material from Revit, the family, uh, and the family type name, and then the actual data point that it was mapped with. And after that, we get the results in absolute numbers, in tones of CO2 equivalent, uh, but also the percentage uh, share of the overall impacts that this material is responsible for, and some um, um, uh, color coding like the impact quintile and the intensity quintile. Uh, so this is how much um, this material contributes to uh, compared to the overall impacts. Obviously red, it means that it contributes a lot. Uh, um, green, it means that it contributes uh, not that much. And the same goes for the intensity quintile. We, but in this case, we are looking into the actual carbon intensity of the material itself uh, per cubic meter. So it could be that a very uh, we would have like a very intensive, uh, very carbon intensive material, which, however, because it's uh, not used in uh, big volumes, it doesn't contribute that much uh, in the overall impacts. Uh, we can go back to the materials tab now, and you can see that we've got the exterior uh, walls here. You can see all the different mappings, and you can start reviewing all of those remove mappings that you might not like. Many of them uh, are probably not uh, appropriate because um, uh, we have not spent uh, the right amount of time to do the mappings correctly. Um, then we go um, to the chart. We can see uh, that we get a bar chart with um, impacts per um, uh, per Revit material, so we can see uh, very quickly which of those materials contribute the most. And finally, the benchmark tab uh, is where we define actually the country of the project, the building type, and the gross uh, floor area, so that it will be able to uh, compare it with our Carbon Heroes benchmarks uh, and assign it um, an appropriate level like from a b c d e f g in this case it's g because yeah the gross area is uh, too small for this um uh, for this big building um yeah other things that will help you during the process uh is uh finding elements from 3d so if you want uh to uh, specifically look into uh this material for example or a material from this element, you can select it and find that element from 3D. So this will hide everything else except for this, um, for, except for the materials of this element. And vice versa, uh, you can also uh, select any material uh, from the Revit plugin, like this one, and isolate it in 3D. So you can uh, find it uh, faster, select it, check any parameters and values of those parameters um, and help you understand what exactly this element is or what exactly this material is and so on. 
Um, and yeah, that's uh, uh, the Revit plugin uh, in a quick overview. Thanks for watching.